From the early days to the 1900s and even the 1980s, the automobile industry has undergone significant change. And while the automobile industry has seen and witnessed great car products and transformations by various individual or collective car brands over the years, one name stands out. Ferruccio Lamborghini Ferruccio Lamborghini was born on April 28, 1916 in Resino, Ferrara province. The eldest of five sons, he grows up on his family farm, where his father tries to instill in him a love of land work and agricultural culture. But Ferruccio has a completely different vision for his future, with a clear talent for engines and cars, which his parents struggle to understand or accept. After finishing primary school, Ferruccio attends the Tadia Brothers Professional Training Institute, which has since become a melting pot of Sentinese entrepreneurs. After obtaining his school license, and despite his father's opposition, who was willing to hand over farm management to him, he decides to begin training in the workshop of a local master blacksmith, who shares with him the ironworking and welding secrets. He eventually gets hired by Cavalier Rigi, owner of the most important workshop in Bologna, because he has been headstrong and stubborn since he was a child. At the time, the workshop was commissioned for the maintenance of the army's vehicles. This brief period will be crucial for Ferruccio's experience and competencies. After the Bologna adventure, at the age of 18, he opens a workshop in Resino with his lifelong friend Marino Filippini, with whom he had previously worked at Rigi's and would later work in one of his factories. When he could, he would buy an old used car or motorcycle that once fixed up could easily be seen driving through the dusty country roads. These were carefree and intense years that left a lasting mark on Ferruccio's character and personality. Ferruccio's carefree atmosphere is abruptly shattered by the outbreak of the war. Ferruccio was sent to the Aegean Sea Island of Rhodes, then Italian territory, and assigned to the 50th Aero Reparto Misto di Manorva, reportedly directly to the island's high command armed forces. This unit, known as the Auto Centro, was in charge of the maintenance and repair of all military vehicles on the island. Ferruccio Lamborghini immediately recognizes the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to work with the most sophisticated tools in the Italian and foreign mechanical industries. Ferruccio is quickly promoted to head of the workshop department, but it is his extraordinary intuition that consistently brings him to the center of any situation and makes him one of the most popular around. Ferruccio's bravery and talents with engines and mechanics earn some popularity and the commander's complete trust, who also lends him his personal car to repair the brakes. Life on the island continues, marked by the tragedy of war until September 8, 1943, when the entire staff of the Auto Centro flees the city. Ferruccio, however, can't stay away from engines for long and returns to Rhodes in civilian clothes. After a series of odd jobs, he later opens a small workshop with the permission of the same Germans who would rather exploit his mechanical abilities than imprison him. He is free to return to Italy a year after the war ends in 1946, but he is not alone. Ferruccio met Clelia, an Italian girl from Ferrara and Rhodes, and fell madly in love with her. Ferruccio had clear plans for his future at the time. He wants to marry and take advantage of the incredible opportunities that are emerging in his country, which is just wriggling away from more and inhaling a new air of freedom and enterprise. Back in Italy, Ferruccio encounters a unique situation. The Sentis area emerged from the conflict in better shape than many other areas due to its geographical isolation from major roadways and infrastructure. But agriculture is now in crisis, despite being the area's primary source of income for centuries. There are some unique opportunities in this situation, and Ferruccio is immediately swept up by the libertarian euphoria, the Italy after war redemption spirit, and the simplified bureaucratic load required to begin industrial activities that boost employment and decides to test its technical and mechanical knowledge, sometimes futuristic like the diesel engine. He clearly sees a new market for agricultural automation on a large scale. At the time, Fiat Landini and Moto Meccanica dominated the market, as they were still producing vehicles with combustion engines. As a result, there is plenty of room for technological advancement for a variety of reasons. At the end of 1947, Ferruccio Lamborghini decides to build an affordable yet powerful tractor for the boss of peasants and their small farms. He buys all kinds of cheap surplus war equipment, proves the engine and fueling system, and creates a very simple internal frame. The Carioca tractor is born, and it is first shown to the public on February 3rd, 1948, the day dedicated to St. Biagio, the patron saint of Cento. 
The number of farmers who admire, evaluate, and purchase the tractors demonstrates the level of success. As a result, he decides to increase production as a result. His father comes to his aid, and by pleading the farm as collateral, Ferruccio obtains a loan from the Casa di Risparmio di Cento and purchases a thousand Morris engines, six-cylinder, 3,500cc gas-powered, hires more laborers, and begins production of the Tractor L33, the evolution of the Carioca. In 1950, annual production reaches 200 pieces. The company employed 30 people, and Anita, whom Ferruccio married a few months earlier, oversees administration. Ferruccio buys a 10,000 square meter field, formerly a racetrack area in 1951, and the first real production company, Trattori Lamborghini, is born. The production unit is taking up more and more space. The plant grows almost continuously. It's just before the economic boom, and Ferruccio has done it again. He has an uncanny ability to predict what people want a minute before his competitors. This is confirmed by the fact that he has been producing tractors with diesel engines for some time now, and he soon obtains a license from MWM, Motor and Verke Mannheim, to produce these engines in Italy. In 1952, the Italian government enacted a new law that allowed farmers to obtain loans for the purchase of farm machinery if it was manufactured in Italy. This demonstrates Ferruccio's exceptional insight once more. This law, combined with Ferruccio's broker ability, drives up production. New products are planned, and innovation investment continues until, in the 1960s, Lamborghini Trattori employs nearly 400 people and produces 25 to 30 units per day. The 60s confirm Lamborghini Trattori's position as a market leader. The market models are a huge success. Ferruccio's name is known all over the world, and he receives significant personal rewards. During a trip to the United States in 1959, Ferruccio Lamborghini visits a few companies that manufacture burners for domestic heating and immediately recall the Italian situation. The house, with all its comforts, is the most common evocative dream at the time as a result of the economic boom. He noticed that the burners were a future trend, meant to replace coal-fired boilers for heating. Following an accurate evaluation, he realizes he can compete in this field and embarks on the burner adventure. He hires the best available technicians and builds a new plant in Piev di Cento. Lamborghini Bruciatori Condizionatori in less than a year. However, difficulties will persist. It is a time of intense change and evolution that drives Ferruccio to rekindle his old passion for cars. It is the end of 1962, and the entire staff is called together to announce the desire to begin building automobiles. The project manager is chosen by engineer Gian Paolo Dallara, a young designer with an excellent technical background with whom Ferruccio has a deep professional and personal relationship. The engine design, on the other hand, is assigned to Giotto Bizzarini, who has worked at Ferrari for four years, involved in the development of models 250 GT2 Plus 2 and GTO. Automobili Ferruccio Lamborghini SPA was created in 1963 by Ferruccio Lamborghini an Italian industrial entrepreneur to compete with Ferrari. The business was known for implementing a rear mid-engine, rear-wheel drive configuration. Lamborghini floor swiftly over its first decade, but sales plummeted following the 1973 global financial collapse and oil crisis. Fruccio has a sight set on a V12 engine with four camshafts in the head, two valves per cylinder, six twin-show carburetors, and dry sump lubrication. He hires the best technicians from the competition, as he has done with previous products and begins manufacturing a car that represents a dream for many car enthusiasts. Ferruccio is eager to debut the new vehicle at the Turin Motor Show in 1963. He buys a field in Santa Gata, Bologna, and the technicians begin working in a workshop while the factory is being built to become Lamborghini Automobili. He chooses the bull as the symbol of the new company because it is a warrior, stubborn and never tamed, just like a zodiac sign. In the autumn of 1963, the company is established, and the 350 GT frame engine is displayed. Ferruccio, surrounded by disbelief, does not bother. The car is first shown in Turin, then in Geneva, and then mass production begins in one of the 11 square meter warehouses equipped with two assembly lines, one for engines, one for assembly, and modern machinery.
Ferruccio is successful once more. Soon after, the company becomes one of the first Gran Turismo manufacturers in Italy. His product is excellent, and the quality of his cars is well known throughout the world, but admiration is extended to Ferruccio himself. Simple, charismatic, charming, and skilled, he quickly established a very special relationship with journalists and colleagues from the automobile world. The P400 Maiura is on display at the Salon del Auto in Turin in 1966. A fast, endurance, and extremely innovative Gran Turismo impressed with a distinct and unmistakable lifestyle. The results are incredible. The Maiura is many years ahead of competitors' vehicles in its class. The most unlikely characters from all over the world apply to buy the car. Dozens of Maiuras have been ordered, and movie and music stars are vying for one. This name is synonymous with luxury and elegance all over the world. The Mayura car is considered a work of art and has been displayed at the MoMA in New York since 1968. Lamborghini flourished swiftly in its first 10 years, but sales dropped following the 1973 global financial collapse and oil crisis. Ferruccio Lamborghini retired in 1974 after selling the firm to Georges Henry Rossetti and Rene Limer. The firm declared bankruptcy in 1978 and was taken over by brothers John Cloud and Patrick Mimran in 1980. In 1984, the Mimrans had bought the firm out of receivership and invested considerably in its growth. Lamborghini's model line was expanded from the Countach to include the Jalpa sports car and the LM002 high-performance off-road vehicle under Mimrans administration. In 1987, the Mimrans sold Lamborghini to the Chrysler Corporation. In 1994, Chrysler sold Lamborghini to Malaysian investment firm Mycom Setco, an Indonesian group of a power corporation after replacing the Countach with a Diablo and canceling the Jalpa and the LM002. Lamborghini was sold to the Volkswagen Group by Mycom Setco and Vapower in 1998 and was placed under the supervision of the group's Audi subsidiary. New goods and model lines were added to the company's portfolio and released to the market, resulting in improved productivity for the Lamborghini brand. Lamborghini sales dropped by about 50% in the late 2000s, following the global financial crisis and accompanying economic catastrophe. In 2021, the CEO of Lamborghini stated that by 2024, all of its models will be hybrid. Though Ferrucci is no longer the CEO of Lamborghini, but the brand and its exclusivity in delivering top-notch automobiles to the elite remain. He buys land near Lake Trasimeno, La Fiorita, and moves there in 1974. Working hard on the estate, he transforms an old cottage covered in holly oak trees into one of Europe's most modern agricultural estates. He transforms the farmhouse, buys more land, and finally hires one of Italy's most experienced winemakers to create an absolutely innovative winery for those years. Ferruccio initially moves to La Fiorita to relax and go hunting, but he quickly converts this land into a big farm tennis camps, swimming pools, and golf camps. Ferruccio spends his final years here. He dies in 1993, surrounded by friends who visit him on a daily basis to remember the past and to project the future. <laughs>